Let's talk for a second about a weapon of academic mass construction, if you will. Teacher joy, confession. I'm a hoarder. Specifically, I like to hoard documentation, specifically about my career. I try to capture the quote-unquote hoarding happenings each day in my classroom, which I like to refer to the house of hustle. Whether it be photography of our individual and or collective achievements, videoing the essence of the classroom machine in progress for me to have an exemplar for future tribes to emulate, or just simply audio recording us, a spontaneous jam session of me and the kids dropping a few bars of a rap song about something you know that's hot, that's going down in social studies or science, just to keep the kids on their toes. I guess you could call my approach as one of the documentarian of sort, an orchestra maestro, an orchestra conductor, maybe just simply an artist, constructing what a sum of many intricate developmental parts is and what a triumphant procession of what amounts to an academic school year is to me. With that being said, I recently stumbled upon a true jewel of a photograph from over a decade ago. Upon seeing it and subsequently smiling at the photo, I was all in my feels, if you know how that is, and I was satisfied in what I believe teacher joy looks like. I was caught in this fo photograph, having the time of my life just to rapping, just to singing with my students in what seemed like a cosmic call and response that has been employed for thousands of years. A miserable teacher can be an academic weapon of mass destruction, if you know what I'm saying. But you know what? I hold on to the truth that a teacher seeks, finds, and exercises a contagious sense of joy within their profession. That is an academic weapon of mass construction. Enthusiasm is so contagious. The kids in the classroom are such distinguished sleuths in knowing which teachers care and which teachers don't. You know, the photo that I was reflecting upon captured a moment of professional innocence as I was deeply engaged at the time amidst my college concluding student teaching semester. I was as inexperienced as it gets. I was unabashed. I was an ex expert risk taker. You know what? The, the photographic snapshot was of me trying to rap about the branches of government, totally on the fly, mind you, with my trusty six-string guitar and a few chords I could dissemble. I've always tried, above everything else, to always hold a sincere barometer of my students' engagement within the lessons that I would ever present, because there's a certain sense that there's an amazement in student engagement. My host teacher was entering her 40th, yeah, you heard me right, her 40th year in education, and challenged me to cultivate timeless and innovative instructional practices that I could always, always rely on. She always wanted me to have a sense of vigilant pursuit of my students to enhance every classroom's collective academic achievement that I would ever encounter. I'm not the best disseminator of practical professional advice, but I can share with you that joy does not just simply happen to us. In our classrooms, we have to choose joy and keep choosing joy every single day. Teachers that pursue the joys of teaching and learning will find that their tribe of students will find themselves in the pursuit of daily quote unquote joys all around them. Teachers need three basic things to find joy within their profession. Students to love, something to do, and something to hope for.